Last time, we came up with a way to match the new sensor antenna to the transmission line on the Millennium Falcon using a quarter wave transformer. However, we decided that option would not work for us because we only have one type of transmission line with a characteristic impedance of 70 ohms. Rather than the two transmission lines with different impedances, as required by the quarter wave transformer, we need to come up with something else. To come up with a different solution that might only require the one 70 ohm transmission line, it would help to analyze what's going on along the transmission line in a new way, rather than just manually working with this input impedance expression that we have here. Uh, yeah, right here. In the early 1900s, many people tried to develop charts and graphical ways of analyzing transmission lines. Only one of them gained widespread popularity and is still used today. It's even digitized on computers. A man named Mr. Smith developed a graphical way of analyzing the interconnected and periodic values along transmission lines. His graphical way of analyzing transmission lines takes advantage of the following. First, we know that the voltage and currents are periodic. And two, we also saw that Z in is periodic. Mr. Smith is shown on the left side of the slide. What he came up with is what is called the Smith chart, shown here on the right. It took him a few years to develop it, so we'll just go over how to use the Smith chart instead of trying to create it ourselves. Mr. Philip Smith developed and perfected his chart in the 1930s while working at Bell Telephone Laboratories. We'll be using the Smith chart to obtain the input impedance more easily anywhere along the transmission line than using that analytical formula we had last time. And later we'll see if we can use it to find a new way to match the antenna to the transmission line. Now Mr. Smith wanted everyone to be able to use the Smith chart regardless of the details of the actual materials and transmission line geometries they're using. As a result, the Smith chart graphs normalized values rather than actual impedances and so forth. And since the characteristic impedance, Z0, of the transmission line is dictated by the materials and the geometries, it's, uh, we will normalize relative to the characteristic impedance of the transmission line. Further, when we want to see how the input impedance changes along the transmission line, we will consider D distances in terms of wavelengths rather than in terms of actual meters.